Hi friends, today I am so excited to geek out on science with you. These three simple science experiments are so easy. They use ingredients that I promise you can find just around your house, even in your, in your pantry, in the kitchen. Um, but they are magical and I swear kids beg to repeat these over and over again. At least my own kids do. So I hope your students love them as much as my children do. This first one has to do with buoyancy. And if you have ever spent any time floating in a pool, and I know you have, then you probably have wondered why in the world you can float on top of the water. And this experiment is gonna show exactly why. So all you need is a glass of water. I promised it would be easy, right? So this is um, a vase just because it's a little bit bigger so you can see, but a glass will do. You just wanna make sure it's clear so that you can see through it and watch the magic that's going to happen. And you're gonna take an orange. These are just the little cuties that you get at the store and ask kids what it, they think is going to happen when you drop this orange in the water. So we want them to start building those science uh, scientific method skills and making a prediction or a hypothesis about what's going to happen is the very first step. So we're going to take this orange and we're going to drop it in and if you haven't done this before make a guess in your own head about what's going to happen because I was wrong. Oh no it sunk to the bottom. Okay well now let's take a an unpeeled orange and see what's going to happen. It is floating on top. So we have a peeled orange that sunk to the bottom and we have an unpeeled orange that is floating on top. So why in the world is this happening? Well, it has to do with forces and we have two forces that are, that are at work right now. We have gravitational force, which is pulling the oranges down to the ground, just like the gravitational force that pulls you down to the ground when you're walking or standing. Um, and that gravitational force is pulling at uh, the same weight as the weight of this orange. We also have another force that's in effect right now. We have buoyant, the buoyant force. And the buoyant force is actually pushing up at a weight or at the, um, the force that's equal to the weight of this orange. So what happens when we peel our orange is that the orange suddenly isn't able to push away as much water as the orange that is floating on top. So even though this orange right here weighs a little bit more, it has more volume and that extra volume is enough, it's more than enough, to actually overcome the pull of gravitation. So it has, um, it's displacing more water and then it is able to float on top. So we have two different forces and because this one is a little bit bigger and it has more volume and it can push away more water, this orange is able to float on top. Does that make sense? So if you're watching live, Drop me a note if that makes sense or if you have any questions and I will make sure to answer it. Okay, so here's the next one that we're gonna do. For this next science experiment, we're gonna make a water cycle in a Ziploc bag, just an ordinary Ziploc bag. Now this one happens to be one of my all-time favorite science experiments. I'm just gonna take my Ziploc bag right here and I'm gonna draw a little picture using a Sharpie. So in the corner, I'm gonna put my sun and then down below, I'm gonna put some water. If I want to, I can even add a little cloud up in the sky, just like this. Okay, that is pretty much all we have to do. We're gonna take some water and we're gonna add a little bit of blue food coloring, mix it all together, and then pour it down in the bottom of the bag, zip the top, and our bag is gonna look like this once we've done that. Now, we wanna hang this bag on a sunny window. This activity tends to work a little bit better in the spring and summer because the window temperature is a little bit warmer and the water will start to do its thing with um, more heat. So that's just a little tip. If you try this in the winter and it's not working, save it for a couple months and then try it again in the spring or summer. So we're gonna tape this up and we're just gonna let it sit and start working. So what's gonna happen is the water down here is gonna be warmed by the sunshine that's coming through the window. And as the water warms, it's actually going to start evaporating. And so it's gonna start going up in the sky. So it goes up, up, up to the top of our bag and it kind of hangs out there. So we have, we have a change of the state of, um, of so this is changing from liquid up to gas. So we, this goes up, 
it is a gas, it's hanging out up here, and then it starts to cool. And so as it cools, it's actually going to start condensing, just like what happens with clouds up in the sky. As that happens, the water changes from that vapor, that gas, back into liquid as rain. So it's gonna rain down the side of the bag and fall right back down here. Now, as you keep watching, you'll see that it's creating a water cycle. So the water keeps going up, it condenses, it creates precipitation, it goes back down and it keeps going around and around. This activity is perfect for Earth Day. Um, it's also a great one if you're talking about changing states of matter because we have, again, the liquid changing to the gas, changing back to a liquid. So you have them changing states of matter. You can also talk about how the uh, precipitation that comes down can change into uh, snow because of temperature. So you could talk about it as a temperature um, discussion. So there are lots of different things that go on here and you can cover a lot of different science terms in one simple activity with just as a black bag. Who knew? Okay, the last one is using Legos because you know I love Legos. So we're going to make a little volcano and I just use my Duplo Lego bricks because we want to make a volcano that's large enough that we can actually fit something inside. So Duplo Legos work a little bit better than the regular Legos because the regular Legos are, Legos are just so small and you need so many of them. So you're going to have kids build a volcano. And at this point, there are actually already a couple of other lessons that we can talk about. We can talk about a lot of math skills. So we could have younger kids count the number of Lego bricks that they use to make their volcano. You could talk about how many bricks high is it, how many bricks long. If you're working with older kids, you could have them um, talk about, you could have them add up the perimeter. Um, you could even have them figure out the area. So you can do some math with this. And then you're gonna go ahead and change this into a science experiment. Um, and what you wanna do is add about a fourth of a cup of baking soda. And for this one, I, I played around with the idea of actually doing this experiment for you um, live, but I'm not going to just because it's so messy and I happen to be in my office with carpet. <laughs> so that would be a really sad video if I made a huge mucky mess of this, but I'm just, I just use regular baking soda like this. I'm going to put a fourth of a cup into the center and then I'm going to take my white vinegar and I want to have about one cup of white vinegar and I'm gonna add a couple of red drops just to make it look more like the color of lava. Mix it all up. So my baking soda is already inside. I'm gonna pour my vinegar on top and you're gonna see that there is a simple chemical reaction that happens. So when I pour the vinegar in, just like all of those famous volcanoes that you see at science fairs, it's gonna to start to foam and fuzz and fizz and it's gonna come shooting out of the top of the volcano and pour over the side of our Lego volcano. Um, so it's creating a baking soda and vinegar eruption, basically. So what's cool about this is, number one, you're creating a chemical reaction. So even using that word chemical reaction is really good for kids because it helps them start feeling comfortable with the thought of learning chemistry, which which we all know was a pretty daunting experience when we were in high school and college. So we want to take all of that stress away for them. So this is a chemistry, um, it is chemistry basically. The other thing we want to talk about is again, changing states of matter. So you have our solid, which is baking soda. We have our liquid, which is the vinegar. And when you put the solid and the liquid together, they're actually creating a gas, which is that carbon dioxide that's bubbling up and creating the foam and fuzz um, or fizz that, that is coming out of our Lego volcano. So there are so many different things that we're talking about, again, with just one simple activity that you supplies you already have in your pantry, which is pretty awesome, right? So you guys, those are our three simple science experiments kids will beg to try over and over again. We have our orange buoyancy, our white water cycle in a bag, and then our Lego volcano. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to drop a comment in this thread and we'll make sure to answer them. You can also send us an email at hello at plato to plato .com. And in the meantime, I hope you all have a fabulous Wednesday and a great week. And I will catch you back here next Wednesday at 2. Bye, friends.